get a picture first. <laughs> so today I'm going to talk about. Oops, sorry. So today I'm going to talk about automatic differentiation for Ruby, which I give a lighting talk at this year's Ruby Kagi. So here we can go into more deeper details. So I'm John Lin, and my Twitter handle is John Lin VC. And although I doesn't look like one, I'm a hundred percent Taiwanese. So all the staffs defaults English to me. So whenever I go to anyone, talk to the states, they always talk English. I have no idea why. And I'm a, I am like scuba diving recently. So if anyone is interested in scuba diving, maybe you can run your trip next time you're in Taiwan. There's a lot of famous scuba diving spot in Taiwan, some, fam some world class level. And I'm also a casual player of Magic the Gathering, which is, requires a lot of math, which might explain why I'm interested in differentiation. So I can work at Exocyte. So it's an IoT company. Uh, so it's kind of like Heroku. So we are a cloud platform that receives all kinds of IoT data protocol and store your IoT data in it. So let's go to our main topic. Let's talk about AI. So, so what is AI? So AI helps us to identify hot dogs, right? So you might, might see this app. It's available on App Store. If you're interested, you can download it. <laughs> so AI helps us eat real hot dogs instead of eating boots. But how does it work under the hood? The most popular AI algorithm now is the deep learning. So it's a learning system that try to simulate how human brains works. So this is how our brain neuron looks like. So it has multiple DNA writes. I'm not hundred percent sure I spelled that in accept inputs. And one axon with multiple terminals that act as output. So the way it works is that it com accumulates electric potentials on the input. So if the sum of all the input exceeds certain threshold, you activate the neuron to generate the output potential on the output axon terminals. And the output will pass on to another neuron as input. So how do we simulate a neuron? So we uh, can approximate a neuron as a function with multiple inputs. So we'll do a weighted sum on all the inputs. Then we'll use a nonlinear activation function to decide if we're going to generate an output based on all the input values, all the weighted input values. So if we generate the output, the output will be passed onto either the real output or as the input of the next neuron. So after we got all this neuron, how do we make it recognize things? So here is, is an example from the TensorFlow website. So it shows us how the neural network works. So here we can see there are some nodes. There's two nodes as input and four nodes as the first layer, first layer of neuron, and two more layers, uh, and another layer that has two neurons. So the night connecting between them are the weights. So each neuron has output connecting to our, each other's input, and the weight will decide how much the weight it takes on the next neuron. So this is actually an animation, so we can see that how it works. So you can see that as a training, you try to find the correct result. So they'll have multiple, they'll use the training data to decide how do we tune the weights. So after training, you'll see that you can recognize which the, what was the area of the blue one and what's the area for the 
orange one. So this is actually a so-called classification problem. So we want to recognize things just like a hot dog. But how do we know which direction to move for the weight? So the neural network is actually a very huge function. So you can see we have a lot of functions connecting each other together. And actually, for that big function, we have two kinds of input. One is the weight, which is will train after the training, which will adjust during the training. And the training data. Training data is actually another type of input. So how do we train the neural network? So basically, what we do is we define the cost function. That's the difference between the network output, the one we calculated, and the expected output. So for like in this case, the expected output are the real data points. And the and the point and the output we calculate are the are the area with colors. So we we'll try to uh, minimize the difference between our calculated output and the real data. So how do we decide which way to move the weights? So what we'll do is that since we got the function and the input para parameter, input weight, so we can do a partial differentiation on the cost function. And we do it on the weight to see how the weight affects the cost. So if we add the weight, the cost might increase or decrease. Then we'll know is the uh, then we know which direction we should move. If we increase the weight, the cost increase. Then that means we should move the weight to another direction. But the highest differentiation actually is, I believe, most people forget what it is. Like one day after the schools, right? So most people forget it. So let's look it up on Wikipedia what it actually is. So this is Wikipedia. A lot of English terms, right? So it's still pretty hard to know what it's talking about. They had discovered a mysterious wiki function. I don't know if you know it. This language is a simple English. <laughs> <laughs> so what is, do I try, give it a try? So what is simple English? So basically just come down to one graph, and there's much more in the page. <laughs> I think one, one graph is enough. So basically, the function has output. Uh, with its input, right? So the x-axis is its input, the y-axis is its output. So derivative is that at the point is, which means the slope of the tangent line at the point, which is pretty simple definition. So there's two words uh, to uh, you. I pretty much confuse it all the time, but I have to declare, uh, make it more clear here. So there's two words. One is derivative. Another one is differentiation. Derivative is the actual value we got in the equation, uh, not equation, formula. You know, after we, the slope, uh, the slope value, right? And differentiation is a process of getting the value, getting the derivative. So there's, uh, these two are different, has different meanings. But I might confuse it, uh, might, might use it interactive, <laughs> interchangeably in the talk, which is not correct, but <laughs> uh, I'm not a 100% English speaker. So it's sort of different. So I try to be correct if possible. But if not, just ignore it and use it interchangeably. So here comes the mass heavy part. I believe if you're in this room, you must like math, right? Otherwise, you must like stream processing. You should belong to the real room. <laughs> so how to do differentiation? The very obvious solution was, let's do it manually, right? Let's calculate uh, everything manually. Calculate the differentiation of the weight, right? But for 32 input, Network with 300 nodes, we have got 32 times 300. We've got 9,600 weights. So you have to do the calculations 9,600 times, which is very impractical. So I guess no one actually used this way in production. 
But sometimes people do this because all the functions are actually uh, predefined. So sometimes they use it this use this way. Another way to do, do it is by numerical differentiation. So what is numerical differentiation? So by the definition of uh, derivative, we can see that the derivative of a function is we got the slope, uh, the, uh, what to say, the slope of the tangent, right? So we got two points, and we get the difference between them, and we divide it by the distance between these two points, right? So here's this, the definition. And we try to get the edge as small as possible to mimic the tangent line. So by this one, we can write a very simple program to calculate it. I believe some people might look, have this look. I feel like this was in the very famous book, uh, Structure in Interpolation of Computer Program, SICP, which shows that you can do differentiation by numeric. By numeric. So what you do is here is that you just do the formula. So you calculate a function twice, once at the point itself, another time is at a point, at a very nearby point, you can de define the distance between them. So it looks like everything works, right? But actually it doesn't. Doesn't work very correctly. So here is a function that do use the above function. So we try to get the differentiation, um, derivative of x times uh, x by 100, which means the power of x to 100. So the expected value should be 100. But actually, we get the a value which is sort of like 100, but off by a little bit. But for like machine learning, the cost was usually the difference was not that big. It's like Point, point some, zero point something. So every error is pretty significant. So why? Why does it doesn't produce the actual value? You might say it's because the edge is not small enough, but even if we move the edge to the smallest possible float value, you still get error. Why? Because numer numerical differentiation is just an approximation. So it's not an actual, not an 100% correct value, just an approximation. And you tend to have more errors when the, there's a lot of operation, a lot of uh, computations. So say like if we calculate only x by 2, it probably works OK. But if you do a lot of multiplication, it will work not that great. And for like neural network, usually for a production level neural network, we'll have maybe tens or hundreds of layers, which will do a lot of computation. So there would be a lot of error for neural network. And another thing is that floating point error happens pretty frequently when everything going getting close to zero. So if you, uh, if you remember it, in Ruby, 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 is not 0 0.3. It's 0 0.3000000004. Yeah. So it's a pretty weird thing, but it's just 40 point errors. So if you, you can try it in your computer, you can do it in RB. You'll get this pretty strange value. So here comes the another option. This option is called symbolic differentiation. So what is symbolic differentiation? By its name, the symbolic means it works on the symbol level. So what is symbol, like f and x, or y, or v, or something like this, or symbols? So what it do is that it teach computer how to do differentiation on mass expressions. Like, if we give it a function like 2x plus 1, you'll do differentiation on it. But the problem of it is that it needs closed form. What is closed form? Closed form means like just like this one, 2x plus 1. You couldn't have other constructs. So you couldn't have like if else or like for loop. 
So if we write the above one as f, if we define a function like s uh, result equals x and result plus equal x, it will not work. It only works in closed form, which is just one expression. And another problem is that we don't really need the expression. We only need the result, the derivative at a point. So we might need waste a lot of resource on computing the expression instead of a result. So finally, we're going to our main topic <laughs> after 15, 15 minutes. <laughs> so automatic differentiation, probably got to speed up a little bit. So automatic differential calculator is the derivative of an open form function at a specific point. And it has the ability to differentiate, uh, differentiate functions with programming constructs. So the function can have like if else or loop. Oh, so how does it work? So we derive, so we define derivatives on basic elements like one or x or log s. These are basic elements, right? And we teach Ruby how to compose complex functions with these elements. And since all the Ruby expressions, all the Ruby stuffs are composed by basic stuffs, so we can do differentials on arbitrary functions. So any function can be differentiated as long as it's composed by these elements. So what do we mean by compose? So every mass function is like we have an operation, right? And we have a lot of input, and we generate one output. So to compose is like we have we feed the output of one operation to another operation input. So it will generate like a tree level tree structure. So this is composition. So here we take a look at example. The blue, the blue circles means the actual value. The actual value. So here we see example x plus one. So we want to see the value of it at x equals three. So we just simply get four, right? So that's for normal functions. Composition is pretty easy. But how do we compose differentiation functions? Uh, value, uh, how do we compose differentials? So here's the another simple graph. So here's we add the uh, pink or, yet, or red. Uh, I couldn't really tell about colors. So it's maybe pink one. So the pink one is the derivatives. So we got both the original value and the derivative values of the node. And we feed them as input, and we'll output two values. One is the normal value, another one is the derivative value. So let's look at some typed <laughs> examples. Why is typed? Because all these complex equations are not copied from somewhere. I type it in all manually. It takes a lot of tons of work. I almost finished a thesis on this. <laughs> So here we take a look at the addition example. So it's the same one, right? So it's the same x plus one. So we can see the addition is actually composed by two sub-functions. One is fx, another one is gx. And fx is x, and gx is one. It's a simple example, but it's sufficient to demo. So we can see by there's a rule for addition operations in dif for differential. So if we add two things, then do the differentiation, which equals to we do the differentiation individually and sum them up. So here we can have the left, left part. So the left part is actually we want to get the differentiation of x, which is just one, right? And we want to have the right part. Right part is the, def the derivative of one, which is zero. So we add them up. So, it's, so add them up is one. So today I learned one very important thing at the conference is that how to pronounce L-A-T-E-X. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's actually spelled LaTeX. <laughs> it's not LaTeX, definitely not LaTeX. So LaTeX. So I think LaTeX is from the, uh, 
from Latin, so you have to spell it like LaTeX. So this is how I write all the math equations. So let's see another example. Let's say a multiplication example. So we have a 3x, a function 3x, right? So we have 3 and x, and you multiply it together, which is very simple. And let's see how the differentiated version works. So we can see the fx is 3 and gx is x. So we can use the composition rule. So the multiplication rule is that if you have two functions, you want to have is you multiply it together and you want to get the derivative of it. So your you your do is that you'll get the left part derivated and multiply by the original value of the right part. And then you do it in reverse. So you get the derivative of right part and multiply by the left part. So we just then just add it up. So we get a three. So there's two rules. So there's another very important rule is pipeline. Oh no, it's chain rule. <laughs> so it's chain rule. So why is chain rule? Chain rule helps us uh, deal with nasty functions. So like in this example, we want to deal with log 3x. So 3x was another, uh, we can treat 3x as a function inside a function log x, right? So how do we do it? So basically what we do is that we we'll do we we'll multiply the f uh, how to say f derivative by g and multiply g by derivative of x, which is sort of complex, but you can figure it out later if you didn't catch on this one. So we get the left part. That part is if we set three x as a variable, we can derivate it, and right part is that we derivate the three x part, which is three. So we get x, 1 over x, times 3x. So we get 3. OK. So another thing we need to do is that there's a way to pass both fx and derivative of x to an operator more simply. It's called dual number. So we define two val two val uh, we define dual number as v plus v dot epsilon, where epsilon is a very small number, that epsilon's time epsilon is e zero, but epsilon itself is not zero. So we can use the v as the original input and v dot as a derivative input. So we can see all our previous addition rules holds because just adding, and multiplication rules holds because if we, the term u dot times v dot times epsilon squared, is equals to zero is because if epsilon square is zero. So the multiplication rules also holds and trend rule also holds. So we can see that the V dot has the same property as the differentiate differential value. So we can see so we can use this one to calculate the differentiation. Calculate derivative, sorry. And so basically, what we do is that we we pass the v plus v is the original value and uh, an epsilon into a dual version of the function. And we, after we calculate everything, we extract the epsilon part of it. So an example is like this one, the three times x. So what we do is that we just put it in and three times x, and we set s to three plus epsilon. So the result is 9, nine plus 3 epsilon, and we just extract the epsilon part, so we get 3. So done for all the messes. <laughs> so here's my library. It is very experimental. It's called AutoDiff. What you can do is that you can calculate a gradient value at a point for arbitrary Ruby block. And the calculation in a block can have programming constructs a condition or root. So demo, uh, not live demo, because my live demo never works. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just copy and pass the RLB result here. Even simplest thing can go, go wrong. So <laughs> let's see. So for this function, very, very complex function, not that very, but 
sim fairly, sim fairly complex something log x plus x times e power to uh, x power uh, e by x. So we can get this gradient is 80 point something. And if we do try to calculate exact value of it, we also get the same value. So it works. Another feature is that it can handle the conditional functions. So we can hand, handle the trinity, the question column here. So if x equals to five, uh, bigger than five, we got x squared. Otherwise, we got x, uh, x by three. So we can calculate by the diff by with you can calculate gradient with conditionals. And another interesting feature is that you can handle loops. So it doesn't have to be closed form. So you can have a result, and five times uh, we add the x to a result, and later just pass the result. You can also get calculate the correct derivative of it, because it's not symbolic. You just treat you just pass the dual number to all the modified version of the element functions. So another interesting is that you also work for enumerable, because why not? So we can do like sum, so it can also work for sum. And definitely you'll do partial differential, so it can handle functions with more than one variables. So we can see here you can handle like x, y, so even more. I guess there's no limit, uh, maybe. <laughs> I haven't tested. <laughs> so how it works? Let's see a very simple example. So we try to get the gradient of the previous function x times y, and at point one two, which we should re which will return two one, right? So how it works? The first is that we convert the input to a dual number, and call the auto diff dot gradient, and next we execute a function with dual number operators. And then we convert dual number back to numeric when we're done. So here's the very simple dual number class. So actually you have two attributes, what is real, another one is epsilon, which both uh, real stands for V, and epsilon stands for V dot. And I call freeze because I always get bugs, <laughs> because all these things are mutable, so if I freeze it, you'll not be, you'll be immutable. So here is how we do the gradient stuff. First, I, we try to convert the input to array. If it's not an array, we'll just put it inside an array and try again. And next, we'll try to get uh, a matrix. We'll, we'll see more of it here. So if the, for the input array one, two, we'll convert it to a dual number array. 1 plus 0 epsilon and 2 plus 0 epsilon. And then we'll convert it to a matrix. Why? Because we we'll need to run the function n times if we have n variables. And we will set the epsilon value to 1 if the variable is the one we want to partial differentiate. So we got two values with one epsilon. And then we just, we just map the function. We call the function with the row. So we'll call it once for to get the differenti partial differentiates of x and next for y. So here is what we got for the gradient rate. So we call the function on, on different sets of dual nums. And how do we execute? So we we'll have to define our own multiplication function on dual num. So multiply all this. So just like we see before, so we'll use our real times others real to be the mean real. And also the new epsilon will be the our real times others epsilon and others epsilon uh, others real times our epsilon. And we'll create a new one. Because we'll want to keep the value semantic. If we didn't create a new one, it's very easier to it's very easy to have bugs because everything will be mutable. So next, we just convert it back to numerics. So we map the gradient rate to their epsilon. So we just get 2, 1. Oh, so yeah, drop down. But it's basically, you got bugs after the first successful prototypes, right? So we got tons of issues. So one first issue I get is numeric operator over <laughs> ordering, right? 
The problem is that in Ruby, the operator is defined on your left-hand side object. So if we use the string Ruby times five, you call the times the multiplication function on string. But if you do it in reverse, we'll get five five times RB. We'll actually get the error because a string will uh, the numeric will co try to convert string into numeric, but which we couldn't. So we get error. The prob the way to solve it is that we'll define some. We'll try to replace the original one and call the real one and, and convert it to dual number if the other up uh, the other argument is a dual number. Otherwise we just call the original one. So we can with the extension we can do it pretty neatly. So another another issue is mass module, module functions. So we define all the operators, but actually it's a lot of very useful operate very useful mass function in the mass module. But mass module are module functions, not not operators. So we have to also have to overwrite the mass function. So here I have to create a dual version of sin sign, which will return the derivative of the psi function. So how does it work? How the dual mass modifier works? So basically, we just rename the original method and define a new method. And if any one of the argument is a dual number, you'll just come. You do you do something. If it's not, you'll just if there's no real dual number, you'll return. And you'll convert all the argument to a dual number, and call the dual dual version of the method. And you'll get the real arguments, and get the real part, and create a new one. And the next issue was the comparison support, because we didn't support. Uh, because to have conditional work, we have to need we need to have comparison. But since for the Ruby mixings, all I have to do is I have to define the UFO operator, and include the comparable. So that's it. And for future works is that currently it doesn't support second order differentiation yet. You can only do first order, and I want to support user-defined differentiation because for some functions that was not defined in Ruby standard library, maybe it's defined in C extension, and if we want to support it, we will need to have a way to define custom differentiation. And another useful case is for speed up, because. If we already know a very complex function's differentiation, we can just jump to a result. And another one is the reverse mode automated differentiation, which is not covered here, which is still pretty useful for machine learning. I might try to implement it. So to recap, uh, differentiation is very useful in mass heavy fields like machine learning. Uh, automated differentiation can help us reduce human error when doing differential and make us more happy. And the last recap is how to pronounce LaTeX. So here's some, I guess it's very hard to grow this talk in 40 minutes. I guess this is belongs to maybe one week of mathematics class. <laughs> so here's some keywords if you're interested in it, versus deep neural, deep neural network and gradient descent and automatic differentiation and dual number. So that's my talk. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, John, for the talk. Um, any questions for John? Yes. I think the the hat is pronounced as the hat. English, like, there's no. Yeah. Generally, it should be pronounced as the tag. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Actually, I saw that source. The source says the the tag is actually a, a modified version of tag. Yeah. Right? Tag is by Donald Knuth. So yeah. Donald Knuth says it's from Greece character. Yeah. <laughs> right? So you should pronounce it. But for the tags, <laughs> it says as long as you don't spell it with L-A tax, it's all fine. The creator says that. <laughs> another 
the lesson learned. Um, any, yes? Yeah, 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 sure. So basically, you um, mean partial is that you just want one partial or not all partial, right? Yeah. So there's no support for it because it's impossible to do it for automated differentiation because it's not symbolic. You have to input all the input values. So you couldn't get one partial differential function with inputs. You have to get all the fixed input. OK, um, anyone? Yes. Okay. So what's more to be done is that I guess if we want to be very useful, the speed is a very essential concern, right? Because for deep learning, computation is very, very heavy, right? So the first one is about speed, but it's not about Ruby speed. It's about algorithm. So what I, def what I implemented here is the forward mode. Forward mode means that if you have n variables, you have to run the function n times. So there's actually another mode called reverse mode. So for reverse mode, it can calculate all the gradient at one pass. So it's much faster. So if we want to use it for machine learning, the first one we have to do is that the last one, we have to implement the reverse mode. 